What's up guys? So today I'm over here on our Sile X9 and I'm gonna be making this part you see right here. We got all kinds of different levels and different height bosses in here. And I'm gonna show you guys an awesome new tool path that every programmer out there can benefit from. But first, we gotta make some chips. So right out the gate, I'm starting with an OptiRef toolpath with a half inch core 5 end mill. We're going to be going 300 inches a minute and I'm expecting our spindle load to be 80 or 90 percent. So let's see what we get. Now of course on the Helix, we're going in at 50 inches a minute. We're not going to hit 300 inches a minute for all these little short moves, but we will once we're doing long stretches. One thing I noticed right off the bat with all of these style machines is that the spindle is super quiet. Like right now, I'm not having to raise my voice to, for you to be able to hear me, where normally if I'm running like a geared spindle or a high speed spindle, you can barely hear people talking next to the machine. Another one of my favorite parts about running the Siemens controls is the Cycle 832 smoothing. So you'll notice that even though I'm running a high speed toolpath here that has a ton of lines of code, everything's running pretty smooth. Now I did decide to run this roughing using zigzag. So we're using conventional and climb cutting, both with the same feed rate. And I'm doing that because I know the tool can take it because I've run this at like 600 inches a minute before. So it's doing as good as I expected it would. We're barely hitting 50% spin a load. Cut sounds great. Yes, it looks like we're making the X-Men symbol. If I was a Marvel character, who would I be? And I think it would be the Broken Carbide Crusader. Yeah, I like that. What do you think Jesse would call you? <laughs> oh, something with chatter. What rhymes with chatter? Fatter. <laughs> <laughs> Scrapped in America. <laughs> to get a machine comparable to this from any other manufacturer, you're gonna be looking at about $100,000. This thing has a spindle probe, it's got a touch setter for your tools, it's got all the bells and whistles that most machines have as options. Like we've said before on the other style machines, the base is super solid, the sheet metal's super solid, like, you don't hear a bunch of things flopping around and banging as the machine's running. And this thing's changing direction pretty quick right now. A lot of lesser machines, you'd be hearing a bunch of little things vibrating and shaking. You don't hear none of that with this. We're running at 210 inches a minute and we're barely hitting 60% spindle load, and eh, maybe 70%. Everything sounds great, the spindle's not bogging down. I'm happy. And you know, when I see a machine like this that runs this quietly, I really think about putting this, something like this in my garage, because you don't want a machine that's so loud that it's gonna interrupt your wife watching TV or you know your kids playing. And it's super quiet, like, if this was running in your garage, you wouldn't even hear it in your living room. All right, so I stopped the machine so we can kind of take a look at this part as it starts to take shape. Right now, it looks kind of like the X-Men symbol, but a lot of those ribs in the middle are gonna get cut down. There's gonna be tapered to almost every surface on this part, and that's gonna bring us to that last tool path that I was talking about at the beginning of this video. Right, check it out. So now our part is finished. Everything looks super good. All of our surfacing came out good. Beautiful surface finishes. The one thing that's left to do is we got sharp edges all over this part and we don't want to send that to our customer. We want everything to be nice and deburred, all the edges broken. And that brings me to our very last tool path on this part and it's Mastercam 2025's brand new three axis deburr tool path. So let's check it out. 
If you're interested in finding out more about these machines, jump on our website, titansofcnc.com, or reach out to Keith at titansofcnc.com. You can see here that we have a whole lot of geometry here that's going to need to be deburred. All of these little towers here have contour on the face, and if you've been programming for a while, you know if you try to do that with a 3D contour toolpath and a chamfer mill, you're going to get different sized chamfers all the way around that. Same thing goes for these bosses down here. You can see that they're all different heights, and these also have curvature on the top face of them. You also know how difficult it is to create geometry and have to shorten it so that you don't end up hitting these walls when we come in with our deburring tool. Now what Mastercam 2025's three axis deburr toolpath has done is automate all of this for you so you can just go in with a ball end mill, a tapered end mill, or a lollipop cutter and deburr all of these features with just a couple of clicks. So if we go in and we select our deburr three axis toolpath, we're going to pick the tool that we want to deburr with. In this case, we're going to use a quarter inch ball end mill and we can select our entire part, tell it the width of the chamfer that we want on all of our edges. All right, so our retract is set a little bit high here. We can see that it deburred every single edge of this part that it could reach with that tool. And this includes vertical edges like these walls here. In my case, I really don't want it to do those vertical walls, even though it would probably work out just fine on the machine. So what I did is instead of using the part itself, I had created curves, which you can see here in yellow, and I created those curves on every edge that I wanted the tool to touch. Now you see, I didn't have to go in and shorten these edges. I just told it, deburr that edge. So if now I go into the user interface and rather than selecting the entire part, I'm gonna tell it to use user defined edges. And then I'm gonna go in and select all of those curves that I'd created. Pick an approximate start point, and voila. You can also choose in the user interface whether you want to use climb or conventional cutting. In this case, I told it to climb cut everything. And there you have it. Everything is going to be deburred perfectly with a consistent size chamfer all the way around every feature. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Everything is perfectly deburred. The same size chamfer all the way around all these contoured bosses. We are able to get down in here in between those rails. Didn't make contact with the sidewalls. Beautiful. Now with all these contours and tapered little walls and things, you can imagine how much of a nightmare it would be to use one of these little whirly gigs on all these features. But with Mastercam's Deber Toolpath, we were able to get a consistent size chamfer all the way around every one of these features. Even in between these rails on these feet here, it deburred every single thing that it could reach with minimal effort. Now here goes this dude. Now see, normally, if you're working at a regular machine shop, you'll have a guy like this, who's standing there with one of those little whirly birds, and he's gonna gouge this part everywhere. But if you deburr everything in the machine, it comes out perfect first time. Yeah, it might be perfectly deburred, but it's still 5,000 oversize on the board, so. <laughs> I see you're familiar with my work. So that's the thing, like when Barry makes a part, he really don't want you to cut your hands whenever you go to throw it in the, <laughs> in the dumpster. <laughs> That's me being considerate for my less fortunate coworkers. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. My first part on the Sile X9. First time using Mastercam's three axis D-Bird toolpath. If you guys wanna save yourself a lot of time in your processes, check out that Mastercam D-Bird toolpath. It's brand new, you won't regret it. Please like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys again soon.